little bit nervous tonight, actually. I, I was going to ask the judges to turn the chairs round, but then again, that format would never work. <laughs> Don't worry, I know what you're thinking. Harry Potter's had a nasty Quidditch accident. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I can't stand? Sorry, sorry, let me emphasize. Do you know what I can't stand? <laughs> but look on the bright side. I've never had to queue at Disneyland. <laughs> now, just, I'm just going to throw a disclaimer out there. If I do get too energetic, please stop me. I want to keep my benefits. <laughs> oh, otherwise, otherwise, how would I heat the jacuzzi? <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. It's a pool. <laughs> I, was, uh, I was at the uh, cinema seeing the new James Bond film the other day. And uh, it got me thinking, you know, maybe I would have liked to have had a go, you know, being James Bond, but obviously I'm a bit inhibited. Ah, Mr. Bond, I've been expecting you. <laughs> <coughs> no lift. <laughs> um, but this isn't the first Britain's Got Talent event I've been to. I was actually... Uh, at the live tour in Manchester, funnily enough, two years ago. And the staff, they couldn't have been more helpful, moving people out the way, getting us to a seat. And then when we finally got there, the view was just fantastic. And we sat down and my sister, she tapped me on the shoulder, turned around, and I'll never forget this as long as I live. She said, Jack, we are so lucky you're disabled. <laughs> You cannot take her anywhere. <laughs> Thank you very much. I've been Jack Carroll. Goodbye. S simmer down. I ain't any good yet. You're not cheering when I take your parking spaces right outside Tesco's. <laughs> but um, Britain's Got Talent semis. What about that, eh? Uh, it's great to be here. It's not the first uh, reality TV show I auditioned for. I did audition for Strictly, but I heard nothing back. <laughs> Apparently, Brucey doesn't think it's for kids. <laughs> Dig at the rival show there. I'm proud of myself. Um, I had a bit of trouble getting to the venue tonight, actually. Uh, my mum got pu pulled over by the police because we were in such a rush. Uh, and the policeman said, what are you doing? I said, well, you don't understand. I've got to get to the Britain's Got Talent live shows. He said, what do you think you are? Some kind of comedian. <laughs> but I'm pleased to be here tonight for, for more than one reason. And that reason is I'm off school this week. <laughs> yeah. And... Um, don't get me wrong, I do like school, but it can be a very intimidating place. Just the other day, I was walking through the canteen, I saw a mug on the table, it said, Robert's mug, hands off. I thought, it's really not my cup of tea. <laughs> a pun there for you. Enjoy that, because it's the last one. Um, but the kids at school, they asked me, you know, what judges are you most afraid of? Probably have to be Judge Dredd, Judge Judy and Judge John Deed. They're the main ones, aren't they? <laughs> Bit of gossip for you, actually, about the judges. They're replacing Simon next year with North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un. <laughs> but, but they're not letting him press the big red button. <laughs> um, but, but, right, if you think about it, they are very similar characters. One, a tyrannical dictator who forces crocodile tears from the eyes of his subjects. The other, the leader of North Korea. <laughs> um, there's also been a lot of talk in the press recently about the Britain's Got Talent contracts. And I've got to say, it's really nothing. And I've got to say that because it's in the small print of my contract. <laughs> Before, be 
before I leave you tonight, can I just say, whatever happens, I've really enjoyed my time. I'm here, I'm at the show, I'm in, I'm in London. And in London, I've been walking around a lot of the tube stations, seeing a lot of people collecting for charity. And I do try and do my bit for charity. I mean, I'm no Sir Bob Geldof, but I do try and do my bit. And uh, I've recently started collecting some money for Scope, but then I figured... Cut out the middleman. <laughs> Oh, I'm on now. I, did, I, I didn't hear the introduction. Yay! Right, so, before I start, can I just say, my first joke, I'm going to run on and throw some eggs. That's been ruined. <laughs> <laughs> and so it begins. Uh, I'm a little bit nervous tonight, actually. I, I was going to ask the judges to turn the chairs round, but then again, that format would never work. <laughs> Yeah, no, I've just lost a few votes from fans of The Voice there. <laughs> uh, no, but don't get me wrong, I do like The Voice, and uh, one of the judges is Tom Jones. And one day, he's so old that I'm afraid they'll turn the chairs round and he'll have nodded off. <laughs> Final of Britain's Got a Talent, eh? <laughs> Woohoo! Yes, we're on. Um, but... Great year last year for Britain, made me feel very proud to be British and um, what with the Olympics and everything and a load of people were saying, oh, you know, how are we going to pay for it, what's going to happen and may I just cite Greece as an example. They hosted in 2004 and they're pretty much okay, aren't they? <laughs> um, and there's also been a lot of talk about who's going to buy the Olympic Stadium. Apparently, Simon Cowell's put a bid in. He's looking to downsize. <laughs> Not such a great year last year for horses. What with the horse meat scandal? Ooh. I don't, <laughs> I, uh, I, d I don't like that term, because uh, a scandal implies something sordid. It's not like they found a load of horses in a nightclub toilet with a load of B-list celebs. <laughs> They've had to change the phrase, horses for courses, in the wake of the scandal. It's now, horses for main courses. <laughs> but what do you say to a horse before a big race? Because you can't exactly tell it to break a leg, can you? <laughs> I think it's abhorrent that they destroy horses just for breaking the legs. Put them to good use and stick them in the Paralympic dressage. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, I'm so pleased to be here tonight, you know, for, for everyone who voted for me a couple of weeks ago and, you know, everything. I've just had a great time. And how I can go from, uh, you know, people not knowing who I am for, to people asking me to do adverts and... Uh, Obviously, I said no, because I hate it when comedians do adverts. It makes me sick. That's why I use back of sickness tablets. <laughs> but I've, I've also had a lot of people on the, on the street coming up to me, and, you know, some of them say things like, oh, you've just got funny bones. It's a very serious medical condition, actually. <laughs> It's very nice to be back. Um, I'm a little bit older now, old enough to go clubbing, which is difficult as a sober, disabled person, because all I get is people coming up to me going, Jack, are you drinking? I have to go, no, mate, this is just how I walk normally. <laughs> Although, my favourite part about going out isn't actually the drinking. It's taking my walking frame onto nightclub dance floors and watching people trip over it. Purpose, but I do pray that it does happen quite a bit. <laughs> I do get out and about a bit. I like going to the football, um, you know, watching, not playing, obviously. <laughs> but I'm, I, I could never be a Liverpool fan because I sit in the disabled section and I couldn't imagine being sat in the disabled section and having to listen to 70,000 people sing, You'll never walk alone. <laughs> no, I 
do, I do like some sport though. Last year I learned to ski. I can see a few of you thinking, can northerners go skiing? <laughs> We can, although my skiing instructor had much the same reaction as you lot when I rocked up in the walking frame. He was like, what, you? Really? Does he know he's disabled? Has anyone sat him down and told, well, they're not going to stand him up, are they? That would be <laughs> counterproductive. But I did, right, I learned to ski, and uh, most people would be thinking, as the wind was flowing through the hair and the snow was crunching underneath their feet, most people would be thinking, what a fantastic achievement that is against all the odds. I thought, oh no, I'm going to lose some benefits. <laughs> Luckily, the goggles still came in handy when I had to look at Simon Cowell's teeth up close. <laughs> Six years um, since I was on the show, I look six years older, which is funny, because Amanda and Alicia look ten years younger. <laughs> oh, thanks, Jack. I'm sure, I'm sure they would frown at that joke, but the Botox won't allow it. <laughs> Never had it. Sorry. I think getting older's fine, as long as you keep learning. For example, the other day I learned that the universe is expanding at a rate of 3.3 million light years per second, so it'll still never catch up with the rate at which David Walliams publishes children's books. <laughs> <laughs> this has been um, absolutely lovely. I've got to say, the first time round, you know, the reaction to my performance was uh, pretty overwhelming, so I've got to say thank you to that, firstly. And, um, and then secondly, you know, the reaction on social media has always been pretty good. I prefer Facebook to Twitter because I would rather get a happy birthday message from someone who didn't mean it than a death threat from someone who did. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've been absolutely lovely and it's nice to be back. <laughs>